Okay, we are here with parallel intersecting and perpendicular lines. And so parallel lines are lines that never cross. And it's actually annoying that in this drawing, in this illustration here, that they do not have this indicator here showing us that these would be parallel. And so for, for that, for those to truly be parallel and for it to, us to really prove that they're parallel or know that they're parallel, it should have an, a set of arrows on it like that that would indicate that it's parallel. Intersecting lines are any pair of lines that just run into each other, like roads uh, at intersections going down the, going through town. And then perpendicular lines are intersecting lines that intersect and form a 90 degree angle. And so all perpendicular lines are intersecting lines. Only some intersecting lines are perpendicular. And so as we go through these, we're gonna, we're gonna actually go through and fix what they did wrong here, the, these are supposed to be parallel, so we're going to put the parallel symbol on them. These are also supposed to be parallel, so we're going to put the parallel symbol on them. And since this, this is the second set of parallel lines, I'm going to use two arrows there like that. I know that it's the third one since we already had one in the example, but I, I want to show you that, uh, that we can use uh, different numbers of these little arrows that I'm putting on here to kind of match up which pairs of lines we are saying are parallel. And so for number one, this is not parallel. Number two, parallel. Number three, not parallel. Parallel, intersecting, or perpendicular for the next set here. So we have intersecting. We have parallel. And we have intersecting again. Here for number seven, we have both intersecting and perpendicular. I think that they actually only wanted us to write perpendicular, but I am going to say intersecting and perpendicular because that figure is in fact both. For number eight, we sort of have to extend the drawing to see what's going to happen here. Those lines are in fact going to intersect if we extend them. And so we would call that intersecting. Now you may be thinking, but Mr. in the original drawing, they weren't intersecting. That's right, but those are lines and they continue on forever. So we can continue the line past the end of the arrow because that's what the arrow indicates is that the line continues going forever. Similar with number nine, that has an arrow on it going down. If that did not have an arrow, like let's say this was just a line segment and it stopped right there, those would not intersect. But because it has an arrow, we're going to be able to extend that line forever in that direction. And they are in fact intersecting. And they appear to be perpendicular. The, the sad part about this worksheet is they did not put the square on there for us to represent perpendicular. In your work and in our work in geometry, we can never assume anything. We have to recognize that unless it is explicitly stated that those are perpendicular with the little square in the corner or that they are parallel with the little line, the little arrows that we draw on the lines, we can never assume anything. If, if it's given to us, it has to be explicitly stated that those things are perpendicular or parallel or what have you. And on to the next page, we have more parallel intersecting and perpendicular lines. Which line is parallel to GH? Well, here's the answer. I don't have proof that any of them are. So what we need to do is we need to doctor this a little bit. We're gonna add an arrow there and an arrow there, two arrows here two arrows here, and then three arrows here. That must be done in order for us to make any statement. That should That's how this should have came to us. If they're wanting us to think that these lines are parallel, that should have been indicated like that. So which line is parallel to GH? Well, we find GH, it has one arrow on it, so does AB. And yes, we could name this BA also, but I'm not going to worry about doing that anymore. Name four lines that intersect EF. And so EF, we see it there. 
I'm going to highlight it so it's easier for me to kind of see what's going on. We're going to name four lines that intersect EF. Now, it's important for us to remember that EF does not stop where it currently is. EF continues down this way forever and up this way forever. GH also continues up this way forever. And AB continues down this way forever. So four lines that intersect EF, we need to consider those other lines, even though they don't intersect it yet, we need to consider that they would if we extended them. And so GH would be one of them. And so would AB. And so right now, already JK does without having to be extended. And so does LM. All right. I have two lines that are perpendicular to AB. Well, there's none of them that are perpendicular to AB because there's nothing showing that they would be perpendicular. So we need to have that there to be able to prove that, and we need to have this here. And so what's going to happen is if we were to continue with LM all the way over here and AB all the way down there, two lines that are perpendicular to AB. So we would have that top one that's perpendicular, and we would have that one that's perpendicular. So we would have line LM and line uh, JK. How many lines are parallel to EF? Well, we have, where is EF? We have one line that is parallel to EF and it is line CD. And then does CD intersect GH? CD intersect GH? Yes, it does. If we extend both lines, they would intersect. And JK is JK perpendicular to EF. JK and EF. No, it is not perpendicular at all. It's easy to tell. It does not form a right angle. Okay. And that's going to be it for that one.